Welcome back everyone to Campfire Tales. Tonight, we have a horrifying park ranger story that I can't wait to share with you guys. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss tonight's video. If you like true and creepypasta scary stories, make sure to subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up. Now, let's get spooky. Hi everyone. This story comes from one of my friends who used to be a park ranger at a national park that I work at, and not from my personal experience. I've asked him to tell me his scariest experience at the job, and it just so happens to be on this list. So I will tell it in first person view. My normal shifts were during the day. 9 to 5 like most people. But on that day, we were shorthanded on the night shift staff because the last person who worked during those hours had just quit. We had lately had a whole lot of people quitting the night shift. So that meant I had to cover. Weirdly enough, I had never had to work the night shift before then, and I was actually excited about it. I had brought some coffee and 5-hour energy with me because of the hours ran from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., and there was no way I would make it normally. I got to my tower right before 10, when it was already pitch black, and the cold July night had fully set in. The tower was fairly tall, with several flights of stairs leading up to the top. The whole thing was mostly surrounded by thick forest except for the trail that I came in from, and the murky pond that was just to the right of one of the tower's legs. The pond itself was covered in those little frog pads and had algae floating around over the surface. It was actually quite big for a natural lagoon. I climbed up, and all I could hear was the non-stop sounds of crickets, frogs, and the occasional owl. When I hit the top, I fumbled with my keys until I finally found the right one, and walked right in. The one room was small and square-shaped. The other one was opaque and had the door that I just came in from. The roof went up like a pyramid for a short length until it peaked, and it was all made out of wood. To my left there was a nicely made bed and a single nightstand with a lamp and a flashlight on top. Not like I would be using the bed though. On the wall next to that, was my CB radio and communication stand, which every one of the towers had. Next to that sat my refrigerator and microwave, which was part of a small kitchen that extended to the other wall as well. Inside the kitchen on the right wall were several cabinets, some small ones that held some snacks and some canned foods, and another set of giant cabinets that I couldn't even open, which likely had vacuums and other cleaning supplies which were above my pay grade roomy. I went over to the communication stand and did my standard check to make sure that everything was properly working. I called in to the ranger station channel and said, well Donnie, it looks like it's just you and me tonight. Donnie didn't say anything back, so I figured he was just taking a shit. I went and grabbed the flashlight on the stand and reached into one of the drawers, pulling out a set of binoculars from it. I went back out to the balcony and checked to make sure no fire hazards or any other kind of dangerous things were over there. Once I checked off that box on my to-do list, I headed back inside and pulled out the chair from the communication stand and put it by one of the glass walls, and I grabbed a granola bar from one of the kitchen cabinets to munch on. I put the binoculars up to my eyes and scanned the surrounding forest. It didn't seem like any animals were up and about and no birds were in the sky either. I skimmed over a couple of clearings to make sure that no teenagers were off camping illegally. Then, I went and peeked over at the far ridge, where I saw a snowman standing alone in a gap of the trees. 
Hold the hell up. It's July. I peeked again to see that it wasn't a snowman, but some kind of shitty ghost costume. It looked to be the ones from Charlie Brown, with the big black holes for eyes that seemed more like they were colored black than actually holes. The kid was still, still staring up into my direction, unmoving. I couldn't see the kid's parents anywhere, and by now, it was rolling up on 11 p.m. So that means that something was up. I broke contact with the kid and walked over to the radio to call the station. Donnie, you off the shitter yet? Barely made it out, but I'm here. I chuckled. Donnie was always good for a laugh. There's some kid with a blanket walking around Southeast Sector, and they look alone. A blanket? What the hell are you talking about? It's a ghost costume. It's got some black holes for eyes and stuff. You mean like the Charlie Brown co- Can you just go check it out? Yeah, I'll go see what's up. I'll call in the walkie-talkie to tell you what I see. Roger that. I turned off the radio and crossed over to the nightstand drawer to grab the walkie-talkie. Once I had it, I sat back down in the chair and put the binoculars to my eyes, zooming into where the kid was. The ridge was empty, with no kid in sight, which I knew would make this a thousand times harder. I pulled up the antenna on the walkie-talkie and dialed to the right channel. Donnie, you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. I'm getting closer to the sector. I'm heading up to the ridge for a vantage point. Perfect. That's where I saw the kid, but they've moved on since then. Well, I'll just check around and see if I can find anything. I watched as Johnny came over the ridge, waving his flashlight around the dark until he looked towards the tower and shrugged. Nothing over here. Damn. Hopefully he turns up again. Until then, I'll just notify the police and check with the missing reports. Alright, I'll get back to... Donnie's voice cut out, and I saw his flashlight turn off in the distance. The small, lit-up spot where he stood was swallowed in darkness. Donnie! You there, Donnie? I heard no response and I rushed outside the door and around the corner to where I saw him yelling his name, only to hear my voice echoing into the woods. And that's when it hit me. There wasn't a single other sound in that entire forest. The crickets and frogs had stopped chirping. The wind did not rustle through the leaves. Everything was completely standstill. I could hear my heartbeat throbbing in my ears and nothing else. I moved my flashlight around the woods for some futile attempt at finding him. I got into the state of mind where I got so scared my throat closed up. And if I moved, I felt like something very bad was going to happen. I had to do something now. I turned around and as I did, I glanced at the stairs below me. At the bottom stood a skinny, horrifically angled woman. She was tall, dripping with water with black hair and dark, murky blue skin that stretched across her bent and broken bones. Her gray dress was shredded, and her black shoes were muddy and wet. And her face. Her eyes were milky white, and her mouth hung wide open like a snake, like her jaw had been grossly broken. She let out a blood-curdling and ear-piercing scream of agony and I began to shuffle up the stairs so freaking fast that I snapped out of my fear lock and I ran the hell back inside, slamming and locking the door behind me. There was no way that she could run that fast, even if all her bones weren't broken in wrong directions. I ran back to the kitchen and grabbed the biggest knife that I could find, and then I pulled out my walkie-talkie, screaming into it. Is anyone there? Donnie, where the hell are you? Someone answer me, damn it! Then, I heard a creaking at the door. I slowly turned and I froze when I saw what was there. The door was still there, locked and shut, and had been completely undisturbed. What scared me was the once-locked giant cabinet that now stood open, with a kid 
dressed in a Charlie Brown ghost standing just in front of it. I stood there, unmoving until I heard the little shit giggle. I recognized that giggle. No freaking way. I pulled off the sheet to see one of Donnie's kids, Marvin, sporting a smirk and a walkie-talkie. Dad! Joey! I got him! Ha! <laughs> Pissed his pants just like I said he would, right? He and his other son laughed from the other end of the walkie. I was mad, but glad that I wasn't going to get murdered in this damn wooden tower. I grabbed his walkie-talkie and shot back. Pissed me off, that's what you did, you frickin' a-hole. I hope you're happy. Hearing you scream like a little girl sure did make me laugh, all right. Yeah, screw you too. That wasn't even me. That was your stupid zombie chick. Who was that, your wife? My what? Does the ghost look like a zombie from that far away? You said yourself it looked like Charlie... Not the ghost, dumbass. The woman on the stairs. She screamed and ran up them so that she could scare me into the tower. Hell, she must have been some Olympic runner. Did you get Usain Bull? Dean? I didn't put no woman on the stairs. Upon hearing that, he would have the night shift for the next couple of weeks until they found a replacement. My friend quit and vowed never to return to that park. To this day, he swears that either Donnie never told him about that part of the prank, or that he saw something entirely unrelated. I began to question my own participation in the night shifts, and consider myself lucky that the few times that I've been on it, I have been stationed at the north and eastern sectors. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the story tonight. Honestly, folks, you never know what's truly out there lurking in the dark, whether it's cryptid or the paranormal. You could see in this story here that a buddy of his was playing a prank on him, only to have it turn full stretch on him, being that there was actually something else there with them. That's horrifying in itself. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help this channel out. Share it with your friends. And like always, spread me like butter. Yeah. Have a good night, and stay spooky.